All right, folks, this is the final episode of a four-part series titled Ends. All right, before I get into this, I want to kind of preface it by saying in my private mentorship, I provided price action models much like this, and I warned the students ahead of time that the price action models would be useless to anyone that hasn't really trained, studied, and did back testing. And this is going to be pretty much the same thing here. So my private mentorship students are probably going to be smiling because they went through this 12 times. And there was a few from each user group and mentorship group that came in that would bellyache and complain that these things are too vague. These things are not specific enough. And I'm going to talk a little bit at the end of the video about how that's not true. But just know that those of you that have binge watched like Netflix and didn't really do the work of backtesting, studying, looking for examples, logging examples that happen in hindsight. So that way it trains your eye to see it. Much like if you bought a book and you see examples of a specific trading pattern with indicators telling you that it's supposed to go higher or lower, if you have that religion in your trading. This is going to be, again, more meaningful to the individuals that have gone through the work. And again, this, this series was primarily aimed at the individuals that have now learned how to find the 2022 ICT mentorship model that I put on my YouTube channel that they can see it repeating, but now take that information and refine it into a plan of action. And that's what this is more or less dealing with. This is a process. So the final episode here deals with making ends meet. So we we're bridging the plan with the process of making ends meet. We're going to be putting it into action and you're going to pursue the goal and overtake it. Just real quick summary, you know, we're focusing on the cost of groceries as a case study here, and you can replace that with anything, as I mentioned, and the budget was a thousand dollars. So we're aiming for a thousand dollars pre-tax, and we're going to be focusing on primarily four opportunities per month, intraday index trading as a case study for this example, specifically E-mini S&P. We're assuming that. The clearing is done by a discount broker and the commissions are $4 per trade. And we will assume the account is 25,000 us dollars to begin with. And I mentioned this can be done with a funded account type thing, if that's what you want to use also, but you can form fit it to whatever approach you're going to be doing. It could be your own money or a prop account. All right. The process we're targeting $1,000 a month just to attack a major end or bill for that month or each individual month. And we will trade one E mini S and P contract per trade. We're not doing more. We're not pyramiding. We're not trying to increase as we make more money. All this is, is an income approach. That's it. We will trade with an objective of five and a quarter points or 21 ticks per trade. After commissions, it should be $250 per contract. A little bit more than that. We'll trade with a hard stop of four points. This is a static stop loss for all trades. And I'm going to talk about that a lot in this episode. We'll close the full position at five and a quarter points or 21 ticks per trade. We're taking no partials, one and done. We will trade the AM or PM session in the index futures trading regular hours. So New York local time. And the AM session is 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. New York local time. And the PM session is 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. New York local time. Okay, so you have a four-hour window divided in two sessions. That's your operating hours. Really short, simple, right to the point. You only need to find one setup and then be done for the day. So if you find it in the AM session, you're not doing it in the PM session, vice versa. We'll stalk. Setups at previous week and previous days, 
highs and lows. Well, stock setups at previous session, highs and lows. All setups will be in the expected range expansion on a weekly candle for the present week of trading. All right, previous week's highs. When the weekly candle for the present week of trading, or if it's the weekend and we have yet to start trading a new week, we anticipate the weekly range to expand lower. So our next weekly candle that has yet to start forming or is presently forming, we're doing our analysis to determine whether or not that weekly candle that's being formed at the present time, whenever you're trading, is it likely to expand lower? So we're looking for a bearish bias going into the week. So we're going to be focusing on previous week's highs. And we're going to be hunting shorting opportunities in the S&P 500 under those expectations. We're going to be waiting for the market to reprice above the previous week's high and move down to a five minute chart for setup formation. We're using the ICT mentorship 2022 model for entry. The repricing of the S and P 500 above the previous week's high is expected to see a raid on buy side liquidity. So we're not trying to anticipate a reversal where we're going short rate as it runs above the old high. We're not trying to do that here. We're waiting for the market to tip its hand to us. If there's a displacement lower in price, that means if it breaks lower, we're looking for it to show displacement. That means there's going to be a short term little swing low on the lower time frames that it breaks. We're going to be looking at that price swing and viewing it as the displacement swing. And we'll be hunting in that displacement swing, a fair value gap at or just above the equilibrium of that displacement swing. So everything I'm saying here, if you haven't studied the 2022 ICT mentorship model, then this is going to go right over your head. It's going to be frustrating. I promise you, everyone that's done the work, this makes perfect sense. They understand they're tracking right along with what I'm saying here. The previous week's high, you're drawing a line horizontally across your chart. And when price drives above that, either in the AM session or PM session, and then breaks lower back below that previous week's high, and causes a short-term market structure shift bearishly because there's a swing low that was taken out on whatever time frame you're hunting, whether it be the five minute or lower. Looking for a fair value gap at equilibrium or higher in the displacement leg. The displacement leg or price swing that made the high above the previous week's high, but then trades back down below it and through a short-term swing low. So that signals a shift in market structure that is now bearish. Once you see that, you can start dropping down from the five minutes to the four, three, two, or one minute charts to refine and select. Now, this is the important part. You're selecting a fair value gap that permits a four point stop loss. I'll talk a little bit more about that, but I want to go through all of the other potential setups. If no fair value gap allows for a four point stop loss, we do nothing. We do not force higher risk just to take a trade. Now these are going to be very redundant. The wording is very similar, but I do this that way you can take screenshots of this and put it in your own notes and you can scribble around the page where there's blank empty spaces and again, it's for your edification. Previous week lows. When the weekly candle for the present week of trading or the one that's about to start, because if you're doing the analysis on the weekend, is likely to expand higher, we're going to be hunting long opportunities in the S&P 500. We wait for the market to reprice below the previous week's low and move to the five minute chart for setup formation. We're using the ICT Mentorship 2022 model for entry. The repricing of this S&P 500 below the previous week's low is expected to see a raid on sell side liquidity. If there's a displacement higher in price, we look for a fair value gap in the displacement swing. 
So everything that was said regarding previous week's highs, we're, we're just basically reversing everything here. Every part of that logic is just simply reversed. We drop down into the four, three, two, one minute charts to refine and select a fair value gap that permits a four point stop loss. And again, if no fair value gap allows either on the five, four, three, two, or one minute chart, if it requires a larger stop loss than four points, we're not doing anything. We let the trade pass and we're not trying to force a trade just for the sake of taking a trade. Previous day's highs. When the weekly candle for the present week of trading or the one that's about to start, if you're doing an analysis on the weekend, is likely to expand lower, we're going to be hunting short opportunities in the S&P 500. We wait for the market to reprice above the previous day's high and move to the five minute chart for setup formation. We are using the ICT Mentorship 2022 model for entry. The repricing of S&P 500 above the previous day's high is expected to see a raid on buy side liquidity. If there's a displacement leg lower in price, we look for a fair value gap in the displacement leg. We drop down from the five into the four, three, two, or one minute charts to refine and select a fair value gap that permits a four point stop loss. If no fair value gap allows a four point stop loss, we do nothing. We do not force higher risk just to take a trade. Previous day's lows. When the weekly candle for the present week or the week to come is likely to expand higher, we hunt long opportunities in S&P 500. We wait for the market to reprice below the previous day's low and move to a five minute chart for setup formation. And again, we're focusing on the ICT Mentorship 2022 model for entry. The repricing of the S&P 500 below the previous day's low is expected to see a raid on sell side liquidity. If there's a displacement higher in price, we look for a fair value gap in the displacement swing. We drop down from the five into the four, three, two, or one minute charts to refine and select a fair value gap that permits a four point stop loss. If no fair value gap allows for a four point stop loss, we do nothing. We do not force higher risk just to take a trade. Previous session highs. When the weekly candle for the present week of trading is likely to expand lower, we're hunting short opportunities in the S&P 500. We wait for the market to reprice above the previous session high. Now, what is the previous session high? Well, that could be the high that's formed between 8.30 in the morning and 9.30 in the morning, New York local time. So a high that was in the 5 or 15 minute chart between those two times 8.30 and 9.30. Those are key times that are opening prices. So if you look for the highest high in between those two times, that could be a run for buy sell liquidity. And if you see a displacement lower back below it, you can start hunting for a fair value gap there because we're, again, we're hunting previous session highs. Now that's one area that's the easiest one I start hunting for a high being rated, if I'm bearish, between 8.30 and 9.30. Now, I'll look back further into London session and see if we are sweeping London's session high. The high of the day isn't always in the London session. Sometimes it's right at midnight or just after midnight and not between 2 o'clock in the morning and 5 o'clock in the morning, as you know, as my London Open Kill Zone time period. And if you're trading the PM session, previous session high would be the morning session highs. So it might go above the morning session highs just to run liquidity out, or it may run above what session? The lunch session, the hour lunch. So PM sessions many times can continue after running out buy side liquidity above the lunchtime hour highs. The repricing of the S&P above the previous session high is expected to see a rate on buy side liquidity. 
If there's a displacement lower in price, we look for a fair value gap in the displacement swing. We drop down from the five to four, three, two, or one minute charts to refine and select a fair value gap that permits a four point stop loss. If no fair value gap allows for a four point stop loss, we do nothing. We do not force higher risk just to take a trade. Previous session lows. We're almost through it, folks. When the weekly candle for the present week of trading is likely to expand higher, we hunt long opportunities in the S&P 500. We wait for the market to reprice below previous session low and move to the five minute chart for setup formation. We are using the ICT Mentorship 2022 model for entry. The repricing of S&P 500 below the previous session low is expected to see a raid on sell side liquidity. If there is a displacement higher in price, we look for a fair value gap in the displacement swing. We drop down from the five minute into the four, three, two, or one minute charts to refine and select a fair value gap that permits a four point stop loss. If no fair value gap allows for a four point stop loss, we do nothing. We do not force higher risk just to take a trade. All right, keeping liquidity in focus. When we're stalking shorts, we are essentially looking to engage price after a raid on buy side liquidity. This further increases the likelihood of being on side if shorts are taken. Now, what do I mean by that? I went through a series of conditions and setups and where formations generally occur and where they form. Uh, many times you've probably seen me do trade entries and shown examples and you're thinking to yourself, how am I able to see, or how is ICT, namely me, seeing these setups? What is he framing it on? Because I keep a chart basically naked. There's nothing on it. There's no indicators. Rarely will I have any kind of annotations on it because I'm working with a one minute chart and I don't have the luxury of time to dress the chart up when I see the formation start and I start the recording. So the logic behind why I'm taking the trades is based on the things I'm talking about here. Not all of them, but predominantly most of the trades I share online, all of my examples are framed on one method in this list of potential setups. So one of the best things you can have if you're going short is the understanding that you have now taken out or engaged at least buy side liquidity. So when the market trades above an old high, those buy stops are resting above that old high. Once they're engaged, that sets the likelihood for a displacement lower. If that displacement lower occurs and we have a shift in market structure and a fair value gap forms, the likelihood of you being on side or correct if, if you take a short in that fair value gap is increased because you have taken buy side liquidity out or at least engaged it. Okay. So one of the precursors is that you want to see an important high taken out or at least probed in the sense that it goes above it. And if it quickly rejects it, that is a trade idea. I love to see because even if it doesn't give me the entire run on the draw on liquidity, in other words, if I have an objective that calls for a potential run for, say, 20 handles, okay, I'm only looking for 5.25 or five and a quarter handles. So I don't need that full run, but there's a lot more five point setups than there is 20 point setups in a day. And if you're framing them around the ideas I've given you here, you have the luxury of finding much more setups than what would otherwise be seen by the average casual price action trader. When we're stalking longs, we are essentially looking to engage price after a raid on sell side liquidity. This further increases the likelihood of being on side if longs are taken. So everything I just mentioned in regards to being short or looking for a short is just being reversed here for the same logic, just inverted. When you understand what it is you're looking for, it takes more time to discuss it like this than for you to understand it by learning it and practicing in it. But the conversation that we're having here, only those individuals that have gone through the work of back testing and looking for these things in their charts 
going back through your examples and what you've already logged in back tested journals, this discussion or lecture will be much more meaningful to you because now you'll go back and see why those setups were much more important than just, well, you easily found them in hindsight because hindsight's 2020. But when you go back and look at them from this perspective, how they form, where they form, okay? Uh, many times over the years, I've been asked by varying degrees of experienced traders that come into my fold as a student or just a casual inquiry, where do my setups form? Like, how do I know that this is going to keep repeating? Why am I not worried about me teaching it openly and publicly? Is it going to stop working? It's not going to stop working, folks. This is how the markets book price, okay? It's all based on liquidity. There's always going to be liquidity if trading is permitted. So as long as there's markets, liquidity will be a thing, okay? And there's always going to be a larger entity than all of us collectively. That is smart money. So smart money, that entity of trader, when they engage price, they're using the existing liquidity. And I know some of you are afraid that because this is growing in popularity because I've released it to the public, Smart money concepts are not going to die out. It's not a fad. It's the market truism. It's not going to fall out of favor. It's not going to be replaced with another flavor of the month. There's nothing that's going to come behind this that's going to improve on it. And there's nothing that's going to come along and diminish it. It is the essentials. It's the core tenants, the underpinnings of the marketplace. You can't get any more truer than this. When you watch my examples, you're seeing me short at the high and you're seeing me buy it back at the low and vice versa. When I'm going long, I'm buying the low and I'm selling the high. That logic is going to remain in the marketplace because I'm taking myself into the market and I'm purposely engaging the losing crowd. I'm buying when they think it's going lower. I'm selling short when they think it's going higher. That logic will always exist in the marketplace because there's always a sucker. There's always someone that's coming in that doesn't know what they're doing. And that type of liquidity, you only need one transaction to book price. That's it. One. It doesn't matter if it's one contract Marvin or a thousand lot Larry. The idea of booking price, you only need one transaction at one price and that's it. So these fluctuations on the smallest scale can be done with a one contract transaction between one party and another, or it could be a larger block of orders that's coming in that's broken up over a series of transactions. It doesn't matter. That same logic is going to be employed because of liquidity. That liquidity, the interest of buying and selling in these marketplaces, is going to have an impact on how the algorithm book's price. It has no bearing at all on the buying and selling pressure. Uh, I'll give you a perfect example. If you have ever traded commodities, okay, commodities have an interesting thing. It's called a limit move. Now, what's the volume on a limit up day? Do you ever think about it like that? Did you ever think about what the volume or total numbers of contracts traded on a limit down day. Say you're trading crude oil. What's the volume when it's limit up or limit down? Think. Are you seeing an enormous rush of buying and selling and all that? It's just a one tick transaction. Boom. It's up there and it stays there. Now I can tell you that phenomenon of a limit up day or a limit down day. When I was a neophyte trading in the grain markets and wheat went up, limit up, and I was in that market stuck, which is a good problem to have because you're stuck you know, in a market move that's profitable, but I was trying to sell. Now think about it. A limit up day and you think I was the only one that wasn't trying to sell it? There's other people out there trying to sell it. 
but it wouldn't move. It just stays locked at the opening price. So nobody could buy anymore because it was as high as it could go. But there was a lot of other people on the sidelines wishing they would have bought, but they missed it. And there was people in here like me that I wanted to sell to get out of my trade because I, I was new. That was enough for me. You know, I'm, I'm up good. Let me, let me have my money now. So why couldn't my transaction of trying to sell what I had match somebody that would be willing to buy it at the market too? Do you ever think about it like that? It doesn't matter what we want to do. And it doesn't matter what our buying and selling pressure is. These markets are going to be priced and booked to the smallest degree of fluctuation and time. It's controlled all around. If it wasn't controlled, they would be collapsing with the sheer brute force of market participants. Any crash is always a controlled demolition. Any meteoric rise is always a controlled explosion. You can argue with me, but it won't change the facts. When you take a step back and look at everything that I've taught on this YouTube channel, this here, this focal point of liquidity, that is something that can't be argued. If you don't have the understanding of liquidity, your trading is going to suffer from it. So having an understanding of why markets would go lower after going above an important high, not just any high, the ones I've listed here in this discussion and lecture, those are the ones I have found that are the easiest to translate into profitable, consistent students. In other words, they, they see these things easily. They can find them. It's defined easily. And you can write these ideas on the back of a business card with these ideal scenarios and these areas of opportunity that repeat all the time. How many weekly highs exist over a course of a year? 50 some. How many weekly lows occur over the course of a year? 50 some. How many daily previous highs? Around 20 or so a month, right? Handful each week. How about the daily lows? Same thing. These types of things repeat. So when I say every week, every day, and it won't stop, I mean that literally. It's not some little quirky little trademark slang. It's something that I live by. You have watched me do this this entire year. I've made my things public. I made executions public. I've shown you the logic where I was expecting the market to go to beforehand in great detail. And then I showed you laser precision entries and exits. They're all framed on the logic that I'm talking about in this boring text only lecture. But these lectures are powerful to the individuals that have gone through the work aspect of going through the charts, looking at back testing and looking at journal entries that you've captured a segment of price action that has met the criteria that the 2022 model outlines. After a significant long setup has formed and the draw on liquidity has yet to be reached, any new fair value gap on a one minute chart can be utilized for a long, if the fair value gap on the one minute is at or less than five handles wide, most fair value gaps will not completely close in on redelivery of price. So what do I mean by that? Let's assume that you're bullish. You're expecting the weekly candle to expand higher and you're in the morning session. The market takes out sell side liquidity and you miss the ideal entry at the fair value gap. Well, that fair value gap may have formed on a three minute chart or a five minute chart, then drop down to a one minute chart and see in wait. If the fair value gap forms on a one minute chart, 
that you can watch price drop back down into, you can buy it. If it's not wider than five handles wide. So if the fair value gap highest point and lowest point is five handles or less, you can enter that as a long trade and aim for five and a quarter points in the direction of the draw and liquidity that would otherwise be the underlying reason for you to be getting in there and expecting price to go higher. So what am I saying here? By focusing on fair value gaps that have five points or less on a one minute chart, as long as the draw on liquidity relative equal highs, relative equal lows, single high, single low, that draw to liquidity, if it's been yet to be reached, then a one minute fair value gap is always, always a consideration to me. You've seen me pyramid positions up using that very logic. Oh, <laughs> yeah, how about that? That's a nugget for you. After a significant short setup has formed and the draw on liquidity has yet to be reached, any new fair value gap on a one minute chart can be utilized for a short if the fair value gap on the one minute is at or less than five handles. Most fair value gaps will not completely close in on redelivery of price. Now, that's basically me saying what I just mentioned earlier, just everything I mentioned, just reverse the logic and you'll have the opposing view. But what happens if you take a losing trade and it stops you out? What happens if that happens for your trade psychology? Well, it's going to suck. It's going to feel bad. You're not increasing another contract to try to get it back quickly. You're going to wait and see if the trade idea still is viable. Let's assume for a moment that sell side liquidity has been taken. You're expecting the weekly range to expand higher. So you're bullish. Okay. So you have a buy program going in. Your bias is bullish. And then you buy a fair value gap. And it stops you out at four points. You want to immediately use the high of the fair value gap. Wait for price to trade above that. If it comes back down and touches it again, that is your entry. Use a four point stop loss with that. If it takes you out again, stop trading for that week. Don't take another trade because number one, you're going to need time to decompress. Two, if you have another loss, now you had three losing trades in one week. That's not good. So you want to keep everything light, the frequency, the intensity. So you get one opportunity to redeem yourself. And that's it. So you have one trade per week, win, stop for the week. You're only trying to get five and a quarter points. That's 250 bucks. Again, this is about making ends meet, not competition. You're not trying to be better than the other guy on social media. You're not trying to push it higher. You're not trying to make an FTMO impression on their leaderboard. Okay. All you're trying to do is do boring little strikes. That's it. You're trying to hit singles, not doubles, not triples, not home runs, not grand slams. You're going in looking for a simple idea to go in and harvest five and a quarter points and be done and let the rest of the week do whatever it wants to do in another account. But one account you're applying to this mindset. And if you do this, I promise over time, it becomes easier. What happens if you find a fair value gap that's more than five handles? Like say it's, uh, say it's seven and a half handles wide and you want to go short. You can't use the low of the fair value gap to enter and use a four handle stop loss because it might completely close that in and do what? Stop you out. So in those instances, when you have a fair value gap that you want to go short in, use the middle of the gap. That's consequent encroachment. So you aim for that. That's your entry. Then you add four points to that as your stop loss. So if you have a seven and a half point wide fair value gap, all things being equal, you're expecting the weekly candle to expand lower. We had displacement lower after running buy side liquidity. That means you have a scenario where you can go short, but you would otherwise have to sit on the sidelines because it's a seven and a half handle wide fair value gap. Normally you would be doing what based on this lecture, you're selling short on a limit at the low of the fair value gap or one tick above it. 
If you go four handles above that as a stop loss, what happens if it goes almost or completely closes in and reprices to the high of the fair value gap and closes it in? You'll get stopped out. So to keep things in perspective and manage the risk, you're going to use your entry limit order to sell short at the middle of the gap, right in the middle, and then add four points to that as your stop loss. So the chances of you trading above the high of the fair value gap is light. Okay, it's not likely you can, but if you get stopped out, what do you do? The protocol is, okay, go back to the low of the fair value gap, wait for it to trade back below it, and if it comes back up and touches it again, that's your entry and add a four point stop loss to that, and that's it. If you get a stop loss, hit there, you're done. Otherwise, everything's the same. You're waiting for it to hit your five and a quarter. That means after commissions, you should be pretty much essentially break even on the day, maybe a little bit above that, and then you just stop. And you can take another trade if there's another high impact or medium impact news event for that week. That's your rules. I gave you everything now. Prepare yourself and accept many missed entries. Before your trading week begins, it's crucial to remind yourself that you are not expected to be in every possible trade idea or price swing. Do not let me trick you into thinking that you're going to be out there like an ace going from one thing to the next, like Spider-Man swinging from high to low, high to low. That's not what this account's designed for. You're giving yourself permission to let most of the moves pass you by over the trading week. I know that seems, well, counterproductive, but this is an income approach. It's not a get rich quick it's not a get wealthy. It's not a competition approach. It's a boring, give me my ends. And you're trying to build it up with that approach. And eventually this account would be targeting your entire monthly ends. But right now we're focusing on $1,000 each month. You're being patient and you're waiting for the proper setup that affords you a four point stop loss and a five and a quarter point yield in profit on a single contract of e-mini S&P. That's the focus, folks. You're not expected to do more than that. That's not an Olympic feat. I've given you the ways to select a trade that has a four-point stop loss and how to frame it. You might not get filled if it's a larger than a five-point fair value gap from high to low. If it's larger than that and you try to use the consequent encroachment, you might not get filled. And it might run off without you. Let it go. Prepare yourself to anticipate setups, yes, but they may not allow or afford you an entry. There's nothing wrong with that. This stuff repeats all the time, every single day. Every single day I'm sitting on Twitter and I'm showing you something, buttons are getting pushed. So let that be an encouragement to you. That's why I say every week, every day, and it won't stop. Just because you're not in my setup doesn't mean that you are failing. It doesn't mean you're missing out on anything. It just means that you are looking for your choice setup. If it does not offer it to you, you are not to be upset. You are not to fear missing a setup or price run. You're focusing on a single five and a quarter point trade for the week to make $250 one time per week. Don't fear missing the week's yield. You may find two the following week. If the previous week did not allow for a low risk setup, in other words, say you didn't take anything, couldn't get in, couldn't get positioned, you close the week with no trades. You're permitted to look for a second setup the following week if it's in a medium or high impact news driver and all things being equal, as I mentioned in this lecture. You could take two trades that week, but once you get the second trade, you stop. So I covered a lot of rules, boring rules, no charts. No scribbling, no rectangles, <laughs> no Fibonacci. But I gave you the brass tacks here, folks. This is what it's like when you understand what you're looking for. Everything that I've outlined and discussed in here, the binge watchers, this is going to be a thumbs down candidate video. I understand, but it doesn't change the fact that you got to go through this the right way. And having the understanding of backtesting, understanding what you're looking for, and then tape reading, watching it form live, whether it be live when it is booking price 
real time or using something like a market replay, the study price as it's delivering hindsight moves. Those ideas of seeing that and then demoing it for six months. Then you go into something like this. If you decide on your own that you're going to approach the market with live funds, you make that decision. I don't tell you when to do that. But I believe this is a very sober approach. It's not expecting you to do superhuman things. It's very reasonable. It's rule-based. It's principle-oriented. It's not expecting you to do a lot of acrobatics each week. You're looking for one easy little setup, five and a quarter points, four point stop loss. I even told you how to frame a setup and discern whether or not the fair value gap should be used or not. I gave you rules in determining, is this a viable setup based on the fair value gap? All the rules are here, folks. There's nothing missing. Nothing. It's a steady, eddy, simple little mule of a model. That means it's going to carry the load if you do things properly. But if you abuse it and try to put more on its back, it's going to get you in trouble and it's going to leave you stranded. So you don't want that. Low-hanging fruit. Low frequency. This is not high frequency trading. This is low, low, low frequency. You like that? Low. Not as deep as the Oak Ridge Boys, right? <laughs> Some of you are like, Oak Ridge Boys? What the hell is he talking about? Long story, different topic. Hopefully you found this one insightful. Hope you enjoyed this series. Um, I think that out of all the, the lectures I've given, I like this one the most because it makes things practical. And you might not agree. And I, I understand, okay? You all basically want to see the high impact, high action, you know, technical things. But if you don't have these types of bullet points and logic behind it, you're going to get in trouble. You won't have discipline. You have to have rules. When should I do something? When should I expect a, a setup to form? How do I know it's going to keep repeating? That's all in this lecture. It's simple as that, but it's going to be impossible for most of you because of discipline. Until next time, be safe.